Great. Hi, I'm Amber and I have Figment Creative Labs, a creative space for kids in Austin, Texas. And uh, this is my son, Baron, and this is my other son, Ryder, and they're going to be um, making butterfly masks with all of us today. So I'd while I'm showing you this, I would love for you to write in the comments where you're from so we um, know who's all joining in today. So we are going to make butterfly masks. And they are all going to turn out just a little bit different. But anyway, um, the materials that you are going to use are um, and hopefully you already have these at home if you um, it was in the supply list. But um, we have some masks here. Um, we will use some beads. You definitely won't need this many. You might need two. Um, we're using some creatology tape. Also, large markers. They don't have to be these dot markers. Just large markers kind of gets the job done quicker. So um, we are going to use some creatology foam glue. Um, and I'll tell you, you can use other kinds of glue as well, but this is what I have here. Glue sticks work great. We are going to be binding everything together with some clothespins and you're going to need a pair of scissors. And then you're also going to need some pipe cleaners or you could use, um, we like the wired yarn by Creatology. And so we're, going to use that as well. I think, oh no, and we are going to use um, the neon construction paper by Creatology. I love this because it, it is different colors on each side, but you could also use um, just any colored um, construction paper. So those are the supplies that we will be using today. Are y'all ready to get started? Are you ready to get started, Ryder? You are? You sure? Okay. Are you ready to get started, Baron? <laughs> okay. So first of all, I have already tied these onto the boys just to kind of skip that step, but I'm going to show you if this is any trouble for you. Maybe you can have a caregiver at home help you with this. So it comes with the elastic. We are going to put it through. You could either tie it in a knot or you could just tie the edges. So either way. So basically you're just making sure it stays on there. <laughs> Maybe you'll do a better job than I did. So yeah, you're just gonna tie it because this is what's gonna be your mask for later on. So, um, and then our first step is to color the whole mask with marker, the front, not the back. You don't need that covered. That's gonna be next to your face. So just the front of the mask, we're going to grab our marker, whatever color you want, okay? It's really up to you. I'll, you requested the blue, didn't you? All right, and then what color do you want, Baron? Orange? So with these markers, I like to shake them up beforehand if they've never been used, you want to kind of get them stamping to get that the juices flowing and then you'll be ready to go. You don't have to dot it on, you can just rub it on like a marker. So, and so basically you get it started, shake it up. Now you don't have to get too fancy with this guys, like as far as like drawing designs or anything like that, because really this is just gonna be your background in case any of that mask peeks through. So don't get too attached to your design when you're drawing. Um, of course, you can use multiple colors, more than one color, but um, you know, you're only going to see. So this is the mask. You're only going to see like little bits that are going to peek through. Okay. And like I said, if your marker's not working good, you shake it up, kind of get it going, and then you can just cover it. So I'm going with pink, um, but you can do whatever color you like. So Amber, we have a question about the masks. What happens if we don't have masks? 
Can we make them out of construction paper or anything else? Hmm. Um, you could definitely make them out of like poster board or cardboard. Um, yeah, you can, you can definitely make your own mask. That would be fun. This is just a good base to get started, but, um, I know that there's some other ones like, um, that you can find at Michael's like superhero masks that we've used in the past. And any of those would be good. If you don't have exactly this mask, it's okay. You, you can make it work. Perfect. And just a reminder to everyone, um, if you don't have the materials today, feel free to just watch and, and enjoy, take notes maybe. And then it will be recorded so you can come back and, and craft along with the recording. Yes. Oh, the green? Sure. So, um, like I said, this is my son, Baron. He is 11 years old. And Baron, what um, grade are you going into next year? Six. Sixth grade. And then Ryder is nine years old. And you're going into, what, fourth grade? <laughs> you're going into fourth grade. But, um, so they are super creative because this is like their second home at the art studio. They like lots of science projects, engineering. What else do you like to do? Legos, I know you like Legos. Did you get it all done, Ryder? Okay, awesome. All right, we're flying through this. So how's everybody doing coloring their mask? I think great. We do have um, a couple of questions though. Um, sure. Can you go over again what kind of markers uh, you're using and um, what substitutions would be good if um, for whoever doesn't have them? Sure. So I'm using Creatology dot markers. And really the only reason that I'm using these is because they come in fun colors, but also they have the wider tip. And so when I'm doing this lesson with like a big class, it's really um, just easy to kind of cover it, you know, in one big swoop. Um, and it dries pretty fast, as opposed to if I was like doing, painting it or something and I'd have to wait a while. So you can use any markers that you have or anything that will col color it really. Um, but I do like how this really, it's already dry, you know, so there's no wait time or anything like that. But yes, you can use any color you want, any kind of marker you want. Um, just the, the more fine the tip, the longer it's gonna take to color it, basically is all that's about. And what about paint? Would you recommend using paint? So yeah, you could use some washable temper paint if you wanted, just do a thin coat, don't do it too thick because um, it'll take longer to dry. And you know, you're, if, if you're on here doing this along with us, you know, it'll just have more drying time. But if you're watching this video back and doing it at home, take all the time that you want, paint it with paint. And then, um, you know, you can push pause on the video and just do the steps, you know, at your convenience. So just as you're, as you're ready to go, you know. Perfect. So then we're gonna, once we have it all painted, we're just gonna put it to the side to dry pretty much. And, but we're gonna you make some space for ourselves as a work area to work. So um, I'll just kind of set this over here. So then you are going to choose two sheets of paper. Um, and so Baron, do you wanna choose two sheets of paper, whatever color you want? You wanna choose two? You like two different oranges? So with this, with this um, the neon creatology paper, you know, like I said, it is different on both sides, which is fun. But um, so we're gonna get two of those, and then let me put this out of the way. I'm gonna clear off our space a little bit so we can work. Oh no, we're not doing it yet. So don't. All right. So go ahead and stack your two pieces of paper right on top of each other and just line them up like this. So writer, if you could stack that and line it up like that. And stacking it makes it where we can kind of do um, two sheets at one time. So then you're gonna grab your scissors, guys. So go ahead and grab your scissors, writer. 
And then we're just going to round off the edges just by cutting, just by cutting along the edge. And I'm going to say, if you have any trash, just scoot it off the table and throw it on the floor. I hope your parents don't get mad at me. We're going to all have to clean up later. So wait, go ahead and get one on top of another writer and do it all at one time. So um, because we are going to cut a lot of different shapes and you don't want to confuse the shapes that you're doing with the trash. You want to know what you want to save and what you want to trash. So we'll sweep up at the end. No problem. So basically, you have your two sheets of paper, whatever color you want, layered on top of each other like this. Now, I'm holding this um, horizontal, OK? So guys, this is vertical, up and down. And then this is horizontal, like side to side, like long ways, OK? Now, these, believe it or not, these are going to be our um, this will be my top butterfly wing. Not yet, baby. Um, and then this will be our bottom one. So you have them just like this. Okay, All right here, let me see yours. So we're gonna throw our trash on the ground and then we're gonna have our stuff like this, okay? So now, I don't wanna confuse y'all. We are gonna get another sheet of paper, totally different than the color that we have. You don't wanna do the same color that you're gonna do. And what I like about this double-sided is you can choose whichever one you're gonna wanna glue to this. So now we're gonna decorate our, um, our wings by cutting out some shapes, okay? So let me show you. So I'm gonna take one sheet of paper, I'm gonna fold it in half so we get our two layers, okay? Here's one for you. And I'm gonna get one for me, like this. And um, folding it, you're basically just um, being able to cut two shapes at the same time because butterflies' wings, they're symmetrical, okay? The writer. So symmetrical means when you have the same thing on each side, so it's balanced out. So whatever I do to one side of my paper, I'm going to want to do to the other side. So whatever I glue over here, I glue over here, just so it's balanced, that's symmetrical. So you can, boys, if you want to get your folded piece of paper and then your scissors in one hand like this, we're just gonna make some shapes, okay? So you could do teardrops, you could do circles. Don't do it too tiny because you won't be able to see it from far away and you're gonna have to cut out more. So basically, I'm gonna cut out like a big circle, doesn't have to be perfect. It's, you know, butterflies are very like organic shapes. They're not perfect. So basically, I cut out two of those. I put it right here. So I'm gonna put one orange on this side, one orange on this side. I'm gonna cut out a tear shape which you can cut out whichever shape you want. This is your artwork. There's no right or wrong. Even though I'm showing you step by step, there's no right or wrong. So I'm gonna do another shape right here. And then I'm gonna maybe add a smaller shape in the inside of it. But since I already put down my orange, I think I'm just gonna like layer it with a little yellow like that. And then maybe I'll do another one over here. It's a pretty teardrop. So I'll do, sorry, I'll do another one right here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other sheet of paper. And you can, you know, you can do a little or you can do a lot. It's really up to you. Oh, those are, that's cool. So I'm going to, I want some pink in mine because I love so again, I'm going to throw my trash on the floor so it doesn't confuse me. And then I'm going to do a big circle or an oval. I don't know how it's going to come out. It might just look like a blob, but I think it'll be pretty because it's this bright color pink. 
so then I'm going to put this here. So basically, I'm just kind of in my design phase of planning it out. I'm not gluing anything down yet. So, right, or you got yours over there? Okay, so yeah, I keep it folded so you get the same shapes. I'm gonna do more of like a teardrop. Good job, guys. And then I think I'm even gonna get another color because I wanna really like switch it up. I'm gonna do like some green. If y'all need any more colors, do you want more colors? Do you want some more colors? Okay, here's one for you. You can have that and I'll get some orange. So how's everybody doing? You kind of get that it's so it's just like in two two layers. So I'm cutting out whatever shape. I mean, I like how Baron's cutting out, you know, ones with straight edges. That's really cool too. I mean, that's kind of inspiring me to cut out some triangles. So I'll just kind of, I don't know, go like that. We have a couple of requests, um, Amber, if you could go sure. a little slower. Sure. No problem. So now that you did one, let's go ahead and kind of plan out your next one. Maybe we should do it like this so it's different than the top. And you can use some of this or some of that. So, writer, so since you have the yellow here, you might want to turn that over so you've got oh, that really pops with the pink, right? So, we were coming in with the symmetry is we're having the same on this side from this side, okay? So, Amber, could you do different shapes on, on each uh, sheet? Yeah, definitely. I mean, really, once again, this is your artwork. You can do it however you want. Um, I just want to give you the basic idea and kind of you can go on that. I want to do this smaller. Um, you do it however you want. It doesn't have to be the same color that I'm doing or the same anything. So here, writer, let's go ahead and get the next one. You ready? to do another one. And so, and you can do, see how sometimes when I cut, I made, I cut out a circle and then I was like, you know what? I want a smaller circle. So then I made it smaller, but then I kind of like this shape that it created with my trash. I could always add that. I'll do that with the same one on this side too. Really with paper crafting and with paper art, I, I think that you really just have to look at it and see what see what you think, see what you like. What do you feel like it's missing? So So you can add as many or as little shapes and different colors as you want. You'll just want some on one sheet and want some on the other sheet. So writer, you might want to pull the next set of wings out. So you can cut some more for this part, okay? Or I guess you could just do it solid if you want for the bottom, because like, a, um, again, let's put your trash on the ground. Let's see, so, um, you know, we're gonna have our top wings and our bottom wings. You know, if you don't put designs on the bottom wings then it's just a solid color and that's okay. That's up to you. That's your artistic choice. So, How's everybody doing with the cutting out of shapes? I think we're doing good. We have all sorts of shapes and colors. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and grab our glue stick and we'll just start, uh, we'll start um, adding our shapes on however you had it planned out, you know? Just put some here. So go ahead and glue yours on so there's they stick on there. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. 
just get in there. So I'm from New Orleans and we have, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of Mardi Gras there, but we have a lot of fun and we dress up and we make all kinds of masks to wear. So this would be a fun Mardi Gras mask with the bright colors. That's what it makes me think of. So you can layer your shapes onto there. So someone's asking how many shapes um, should we should we make? Um, yeah, you know, just just check it out. I mean, maybe like four to ten. Just um, really just see what you like. Like I have, let's see what I have over here. I have three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have twelve. But I mean, Baron has less and it looks great. So really just whatever you like. Perfect. And for Sorry. someone who doesn't have extra paper, could they draw in their shapes? Oh, that's a great idea. Yes, definitely. You can draw them in. Perfect. Yeah, that sounds fun. And Liana says that yours is so pretty. Oh, thank you. But yeah, that's a great idea to draw it in. We have a butterfly garden here um, and we hatched a bunch of butterflies this year and it was so much fun just to see the whole process and we, were, we really enjoyed it. No, it was this year we got in the, um, the big butterfly net, remember? And oh, took yeah. pictures. I swear that was last year. Well, I think we, we did hatch butterflies last year also, so. Yours looks like an African mask. I love it. So you get all your shapes glued on however you like or drawn on, either way is fine. Now the next step, um, this, um, I don't know, has anybody ever made a fan before that you use to fan yourself? Um, this, is a, this is a skill that's very important to learn, but it can be a little tricky at first, okay? So I'm gonna try to walk you through it. And there might be experts out there that have made tons of fans, but basically, you are going to fold your paper up horizontally, just like I have, just like we've been working on it. Writer is asking if you can actually become a professional fan folder. And you know what? I I bet that there are in Japan maybe or something, professional fan folders. I don't know. So basically you're gonna fold a little bit this way. What do you say think this is, Baron? Like an inch, half an inch, one inch. So you can do like one inch, then you flip it, and then you fold it again, one inch. And you're just, as you do this, you're gonna fold it, just make it real smooth. Sometimes your little paper that you already um, glued on is gonna kind of stick out. So you're just going to kind of fold that over just so it doesn't come off. So then you're gonna go back again Oh, mine are, mine are flipping out over here. Let's see, got to fold it again. So basically you're going back and forth, just like an accordion, okay? You're gonna do it for the top one, and then you're also gonna do it for the next sheet for any of the speedy fan makers. But, so you're gonna turn it. And if this, if this gives you a lot of trouble, maybe have, um, an adult help you with it or an older sibling because I know it can be tricky, but believe me, it's a good paper folding skill to learn. So you are going to have one and you're gonna put that to the side. Now you're gonna do the next one. So did you do both of yours already, Speedy? And you're gonna do the same with 
the next one, okay? So Mahika right. said that these masks would be absolutely great for masquerade ball. Oh, they would be for sure. For what? Masquerade ball. The next masquerade ball you go to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so you are gonna have two fans at that point. Now you're gonna stack them one on top of another like like so, where you see the extra color all facing the same way, okay? And then we are going to grab some tape, whatever color you want, and we are going to just kind of attach them together with a piece of tape in the middle. So once again, your horizontal, you're stacked one on top of another, and you're just um, kind of, having these together. Oh, I didn't do mine long enough. Let me add just a little bit more. Amber, as soon as you can, could you go over the folding again, um, but much slower so that everybody can- Sure, sure, sure. Thank so you. you grab a sheet of paper horizontally, like we talked about. So like long ways side to side. Then we're gonna fold over about an inch like this. So that's probably a good writer. And then you're just gonna smooth it out. So you just have one little fold like that. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it over and then I'm gonna fold this way where it meets the line and I'm going to fold it straight just like that. And then I'm gonna flip it again And then fold it again. And if your paper is getting caught up, you just kind of keep okay. folding that. Like so. This is the tricky part. I did this with a class of um of kids, and this took us a little bit of time. So be patient with yourself, okay? So you have your accordion fold of paper, and then that is where you're going to put the tape in the very middle, kind of like, you know, right here in the middle, just to keep it together, okay? And Amber, for the tape, would decorative tape or I guess washi tape be okay? Yeah, that's actually perfect, yes. Yeah, that is great. Okay, so then you have your top wings and your bottom wings right here. So you can set it on top of your mask. You always have the, you have the nose facing down and we're gonna have, I'm just showing you, how we're gonna have to leave room for the eyes because you're gonna have to be able to see out of the eyes when you wear your mask. So this is where it gets a little messy with glue, okay? So we put some of the foam glue in this jar with paint brushes just to really slop it on there, but you can also use a thing of glue and just put some on the back. I like to run. I'll show y'all here. You can start doing it with this and I'll kind of show y'all with this. So you're basically going to put glue. Just a second. So where there's the the pieces of the crease, the creases of the paper, the ones that are most out towards you you're going to cover those with glue here here baby so here i'm going to put this down here okay and so then you're going to start doing this just covering it with glue just like so okay so you do that and i'll kind of do this so we're basically going to put tons of glue on this now guys if you have a caregiver at home that wants to help you and maybe do hot glue feel free, that will work great.
because I work with a lot of kids and I want, you know, I want everybody to be able to do it, then, you know, we're just using kind of the, the normal glue right now, but really getting it on there. It'll dry clear, so it's no worries. So I'm really getting it on there. And then I, that's when I use my clothespins. And actually, I'm going to like kind of put extra glue right here, put a clothespin. So Amber, what happens if we don't have any clothespins? Oh, OK. Um, so well, then you could um, use hot glue, like I said, with an adult's um, help. Um, so let me help you there, writer. So OK, so let's get a lot of glue on here. The basically, if, if you don't want to use hot glue, you use the clothespins to help it stay in place while it dries. And so that's really just helping in, um, helping it stay in a place. So you could use paper clips. That would work. Perfect. And going back to um, just to uh, get both paper, both folded papers together, is there any substitution for tape? Could we maybe um, staple it together? Sure. Yeah, that's a good idea. Perfect. So basically, you're folding it however you want. But just you want to be able to see the eyes or be able to see through the eyes. OK, so I'm putting extra glue here. Here, right, I want you to use some of this. All right, let me help you with this. So basically, put a little extra glue here. So, you know, one thing is sometimes if you do a thicker um, fold, it's going to be farther away from the mask and it might be harder to glue on. If you do smaller folds in your fan, it will be closer to the mask and it will be easier to glue on. You know, it won't have as much depth. So let me show you this right here, writer, okay? So we are going to put some glue here and then we're going to, can you put that close pin on there? Awesome. Now I'm going to put some glue here. Can you put that clothes pin on there? Okay. Well, so we're going to leave an opening for the eye. Can you sit up, please, Ready? All right, and we put that on. How are you doing, Baron? You're so quiet over there. Good? Okay. So let's kind of spread it out. So if you all hear that bird that we have here in the background, we have a writer's green cheek conure here. A mint conure, and he's uh, making some some sounds. Let me see, how are you doing over here? Let me make sure. So we want to spread it out just enough to really be able to see the wings of your butterfly like that. We'll make the opening and kind of spread this out here. Thank you. All right, so basically, you know, if you're doing, um, if you do use hot glue, then, you know, this will be a little bit quick, that'll be a little bit quicker process. And um, you won't have to, you know, worry about the clothespins as much. And if, but you can also do it like this. And then you're just gonna kind of wait 
for it to dry. So Amber, we have a lot of questions um, on that last okay. part, the gluing and then um, sticking it onto the mask. Is there any way you sure. could go over that again? Sure. Um, so basically, you, you know, you have your on the back side. So you have the two on top of each other. And then on the back side, um, you're going to just kind of cover it with glue. And whatever part is most near you, you know, you don't need to put it deep in the crevices because that's not going to touch anything. That's not going to touch your mask. So you're just really going to want to put it along the edges. You don't really need to go to the end because that doesn't matter as much either. You want to get it more in the middle like this. So you're just going to go back and forth, back and forth like that. Okay. So you're going to get it all on there. And then, can you hear me that mask? Amber, would, so any then, type, sorry, would any type of glue work? Um, pretty much, um, yes, like hot glue would work, um, this works. I seem to like the Elmer's, um, glue all better than the normal school glue. I feel like it, it has a better bond. It works better, but so like an Elmer's glue all glue would work or the creatology craft glue would work, um, any of them would. I would not say a glue stick for this. That's not going to do the trick. You need something a little more a sturdy with a sturdy grip. So, Perfect. and you can just kind of put it on your mask, slop it around, it's fine. You know, it'll be messy, but then when it dries, you know, it dries clear and, um, and it'll be fine because once it dries, that's when you take the clothespins off and you have your mask and then you can wear it, you can play and it's a cool butterfly mask. But, and, but when you're gluing it on, fan out your fan, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, pull out the edges, don't do it just straight, kind of spread it out so you can see all those pretty colors that you um, that you cut out all those shapes in there, and don't forget to leave openings for the eyes. So see how I fan that out like that, and then I put the clothes pan pin on, and I can add extra glue to really you know make it really stay. The more you spread it out, the bigger your fan's going to be, right? So when you make these at home, um, make sure that you photograph your finished masks and tag it, make it, make it with Michaels so we can see all of the, the fun masks that you make today. Pressure's there and good. I'll we'll go ahead and put that in the chat. Oh, great. And you can put as many clothespins as you want, okay? You just want to make sure that it's all, you know, that it's staying on there. pretty much just making sure it's secure because it's not, you know, with just this normal glue, you're just not gonna, not gonna stay without being manipulated, without being pulled in different ways, so. So does anybody have any questions about this? I know that it kind of gets tricky towards the end with the gluing, but, um, 
you know, you just kind of work with it and don't be afraid to, to bend the paper to get it crinkled up. Like it's okay. You've got to get in there, get messy and then, you know, do it. And so it might be covered in glue and you're like, Oh, what's happening here. But then once it dries, it's on there and, and, and it's cool. So is everybody kind of getting caught up with the gluing part of it? We have several people that are still a little bit behind. Um, okay. I think this was a, a little bit um, difficult for some people, but again, um, just take your time, be patient. If you need to go, come back and, and watch this again and pause it and you know go as slow as you need to, um, the sure. recording will be available. I'll put the links in the chat um, again. Okay, oh, yeah. and so um, then let me show you how to do the center of the butterfly with your um, pipe cleaner. Um, see, so we're just gonna add this fuzzy friend in the middle. So you're going to get a pipe cleaner, um, like you could either combine, combine two pipe cleaners together or you could cut about 16 inches of this um, Chanel yarn and then we're just basically, you're twisting the wire, making the shape of a butterfly's body and then leaving the two, um, sorry, leaving the two um, antennas to go up. And then you're just gonna kind of clip it on like, like so. And then that is something you can kind of secure with glue as well. So basically you're just making the center of the butterfly if you have normal pipe cleaners like this, you would just grab like two of them, Let's see. twist them together to combine them, and then you're gonna you're gonna have the two sticking out. You twist it, and then same thing. You just kind of hug your the part by the nose like so and then it stays on there you're just making the body of the butterfly and then like Baron's doing right here you can this is an extra step if you have it great if you don't no big deal but you can add like beads at the end of the antennas um also it's totally up to you if you want to do that or not and then you can always just kind of attach this with a little extra glue just to make sure it doesn't fall off. But it's mine's on there pretty good, just hugging that paper. But um, it's probably good to secure it with a little glue. So. Perfect. And can you think of any substitutions um, for pipe cleaners in case someone doesn't have any? Hmm. Well, I think you could probably cut out um, more paper, just a different colored paper and glue that in the center. Um, I like the pipe cleaners because it hugs on there with the wire and it, it you know, kind of in there, it's like fuzzy and bright colors, but I mean, definitely you could just cut out paper and uh, attach it there and that would work just as well. Perfect. Just <laughs> have a mustache. And so, um, you know, I'm not exactly sure how long the glue will take to dry. Um, I would say at least 25 minutes to be safe. Um, you know, if you can wait longer, even better, just to be on the safe side. And um, so you let that dry all the way, and then, and then you can. Um, and then you, oh, yes. Yeah. Here you go. Um, you let it dry all the way, and then you can take the clothespins off, and you can reuse the clothespins for other things. Did you make a dinosaur? Um, but yeah, I mean, you can definitely do substitutions for all these things. Um, 
and make it work for you. So. Perfect. We, we do have a couple of questions about um, the pipe cleaners. Can you go over that again one last time? Sure, sure. So if you have these that were in the supply list, um, you can just cut like 16 inches off of it and use that to mold into the shape that you want. If you have normal pipe cleaners, um, then let me show you. So basically you take two pipe cleaners and I mean, really you could take two side by side, twist them together so they connect together. You could keep these antennas out and then you could maybe um, fold up the bottom and make the body a little thicker. So you could do it like that. And so you basically have like a Y shape and then you can attach it to the front of the nose just by clasping it on like that and then securing it with a little extra glue. Um, you could also, another way to do it, not to confuse you more, but you could make it longer by twisting it, fold it up where it meets, and then we're gonna leave our two at the end, our antennas, and then we're gonna twist the wire inside of the um, stem just to attach it. And you're making the body of the butterfly. And you can always like twist, twist the tail up or if you want it to be kind of fatter, if you want it to have like a curly cue, you could do like a little curly cue it's really whatever you want to do for your butterfly. And then you attach it by kind of folding it on like so. So just play around with it basically and you until, you, until you get it the way that you want it. Don't get, try not to get frustrated with it. There's no necessarily right or wrong. It's, it's just making it work. So just um, manipulate it, fool around with it until it gets it gets to what you're happy with. It gets the way that you want it. What was that? I was gonna ask, would you recommend putting um, beads or decorations on the antennas? Yeah, yeah. So we just added them like at the end. We put a bead on each side, but you could even, you could put more beads. I think that would add even more color to it, definitely. And any recommendations for making the body a little more like plump? A little, uh, a little more, you could probably, I mean, you could have your body and then you could get other colors maybe. And you could even like a, a pipe cleaner and you could twist it around to add that uh, width or, you know, dimension to it. And also that kind of makes it stand out more adding that light color. So you could do something like that for sure. That's fun. Oh, I love that. And then, and then putting it on and adding beads. Um, yeah, let me see that. So basically this is one that we made. Now these are kind of, um, I don't know what you would call them, but like fluffy pipe cleaners, where I think that there's some in here, where they kind of have the, the thicker end to it. I don't even know what you would call that, but so that's kind of fun. And now y'all were asking earlier about the mask. This was a different like paper. This was the Creatology butterfly mask that we use. So you could use that. That's a, a, you know, a butterfly mask is a great base for a butterfly. Um, so either way, whatever works and whatever you have available, so. We have a couple of people adding googly eyes and glitter because why not? Oh, I love that. That's such a great idea. Now, if you do add glitter, be very careful not to get the glitter in your eyes because this is, you know, if you hang this on a wall for decoration, Cool, put all the glitter on it you want. If you're going to be wearing it on your face, 
just be careful with the glitter. Make sure that you're shaking off any extra um, glitter so you don't get that in your eyes. Nobody wants that, but I love googly eyes. That's a great idea. Pom poms even. Um, that's fun. Yeah, you can add whatever you want. Now, remember, you know, you don't want it to get too heavy because you are going to be wearing this on your face, maybe. And so, um, you know, we want to wear it down, get too heavy. All right, that looks very barren. I love it. It looks like we're all good. No I'll more. try mine on and see how it how it looks. What do you think? <laughs> that was looking the writer really has cool. his on over here. I don't know if you can see. Um, Baron, you want to put one on? Looks like a dragon. Very colorful dragon, I think. Yeah, nice. <laughs> You're getting a lot of compliments on yours. All three of them. Oh, well, good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Paper crafting is lots of fun. Um, we love to work with paper at the studio. Um, we work in all mediums. Um, but definitely collage and paper. It's so fun because you can use so many different um, different types of paper, like magazines, um, newspaper, musical sheets, colorful paper. I mean, this would even be fun if you, instead of using the bright colored paper for um, the shapes, you could even like cut circles out of wildlife you know, magazine, um, magazine things or anything like that to um, add to it. You can, you know, really the possibilities are endless. So, um, you know, the important part is just to be creative with it and have fun. Try not to get, you know, frustrated with, um, you know, with these steps because I know it can be hard sometimes, uh, especially learning a new skill like, you um, folding paper and then the gluing process. I understand that can be hard too sometimes. So definitely just take a deep breath and kind of just get into it and have fun and find out what which way works best for you um, to, to make it enjoyable. So. Use all different kinds of colors of any material. I mean, yeah, you can all use all different kinds of colors, um, like Fred was saying. Yeah, different colors of pipe cleaners, um, paper, you can color your masks, however you like. Yeah, you can, everybody's, that's what's fun. I did this with um, a class at, during camp, and we had 10 students, and even though we were using all the same material to work with, everybody's looked so different, and um, I think that's always really cool to see. The variety it just you know everybody's um, choices are different and um, add, add different techniques to it and stuff so um, it's always fun to see the finished product what, what everybody comes out with different so. perfect we're so i'm not seeing any more questions it looks like everyone had a great time really like this Good, good, good. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, really enjoyed showing you how to make these butterfly masks. Um, Ryder's just gonna sit here and pick all the glue off of my hands and uh, I guess we'll just call it a day, but uh, thank you so much. And I hope you all enjoy your masks. And um, I'd love to see what you made and what you continue to make. Um, maybe that are even inspired by these masks um and just tag it making make it with michael perfect thank you so much amber and thanks everyone for joining us today 
Thank you. Bye. Bye.